What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another episode. In today's video, I'm going to give you an update to my previous super successful OBS tutorials that I've given you guys. We're going to cover the best high-end and low-end streaming and recording settings for going into 2021. We're going to cover OBS 26.1 and it doesn't matter if you're using Streamlabs OBS or OBS Studio and it doesn't matter if you're streaming on YouTube, Twitch, or Facebook Gaming. Now this is the newest version of OBS which is version 26.1 and even though this is always constantly changing and you guys tell me it looks different for some of you, just remember the foundation of these settings are universal and will remain the same across the board with a few minor adjustments here and there. But before we get started, I gotta squash some beef with some of you little turkey nuggets out here. You little up and coming Nick Merckx and Tim the Tatman streamers, you guys are always dropping comments saying that I have the best stream quality you've ever seen, I have the best studio production quality you've ever seen in my videos. You guys are dropping likes, you're dropping comments, hundreds of thousands of you are, but you're not subscribing. Subscribe to the channel. I promise you it'll be worth it. First up, let's cover what's new in 26.1. Most of it is bug fixes, but you can go ahead now and copy and paste filters on single sources in your software. And you can go ahead now and also enable Twitch VOD tracks, which will select a separate audio track for you guys when you're streaming. For example, if you have the rights for the music you're streaming or Twitch has given you certain music rights for streaming only and not your VODs, OBS has now added a separate audio track to try and circumvent all these copyright issues going on with Twitch. However, still, this does not prevent you from getting a copyright strike or a strike, whether it's on Twitch, YouTube, or Facebook. So please make sure you're using copyright free music unless you have permission. These guys are getting serious about this, so just make sure you understand what's going on. All right, so first up, go ahead, open up OBS, and then you're gonna head into your settings tab. And then once you get into settings, we're gonna go into general first. Usually I like leaving mine on dark. Obviously this is a dark room. And the last thing I need is getting flash banged here at 10 p.m. and not being able to see anything. So for me personally, I always choose the dark theme. Everything else is pretty straightforward here. You don't have to enable anything or really play with too many settings. Once you're done here, just hit apply. First things first, head into the stream tab and select your service that you plan on streaming on, whether it's YouTube, Twitch, Facebook gaming, select your server. Um, for me, it's going to be the primary YouTube ingest server, which is best for me currently. Here's your stream key. Obviously, don't show this to anyone. Once you have this taken care of, just make sure you hit apply. And now we're going to go ahead and get into the output tab. Now, what I plan on doing is covering the low end settings first and gradually climbing up and covering all of the other settings for OBS. So this is going to be for those of you that are just starting out, don't have a beefy PC and you need those much lower end settings. So you guys can start recording and streaming. So we'll start there. Then we'll end up at the higher end settings, then cover everything else. First things first, head into the output tab and select the advanced output mode. Click on the streaming tab and we're going to get started. Now here is where you're going to see that audio track that has a separate audio track for your Twitch VODs. You can go ahead and select that here. If not, it'll look like this and you're just going to select your first audio track. First, make sure you select your encoder. For a majority of you out there with low end PCs, you'll be stuck with X264. So make sure you select that. If you have an AMD or Nvidia GPU, even better. Make sure you select one of those. If it's an Nvidia graphics card, make sure you select the NVENC new encoder, which is the best encoder for OBS and is available on most 10 series and 20 series graphics cards out there. So if you have a 1060, 1080 or 2060, etc., you should have that encoder. Long story short, it uses much less processing power to encode whatever you're streaming and recording, which helps your PC not bottleneck under pressure and drop frames. Now there is a list that'll show you which GPU has which encoder on Nvidia's side, so I will make sure to leave that link down below for you guys. If you're just getting into gaming and you haven't bought a graphics card yet, make sure you pick the right graphics card that has that encoder. Like I said, I will make sure to leave that link down below for you guys. Now for your rate control, make sure you select CBR, which is constant bitrate, and you're going to start your bitrate off at 2000 and work your way up to 3500 if your PC or your internet speed isn't the best. For your keyframe interval, make sure you set that to 2. For your preset, select performance or max performance. For the lower end settings, make sure you stay away from quality and stay away from max quality. For your profile, select high, and then have look ahead and cycle visual tuning both checked. For your GPU, make sure you select 0 and then your max B frame set that to 2. Make sure you hit apply. Then head over into your recording settings. Again, for your output mode, select advanced. For the type, select standard. For the recording path, I just set a separate folder on my desktop that's called OBS recordings so I can easily access those videos once they're done recording, once I'm done streaming or recording whatever I plan on doing for the day. I just set that recording path to my desktop because it's the easiest way to find those videos once they're done. For the recording format, I use MP4. Audio track, I select one. Again here for your encoder, make sure you select NVENC new if you have it. If not, select AMD or X264. 
do not rescale your output leave this alone for now we'll cover this for the low end settings then higher end settings later custom muxer settings you won't have to do anything here get back down into the rate control now for recording you always want to select vbr not cbr for the bitrate start off at 20,000 and set your max bitrate to 45,000 if you're still experiencing lag lower your bitrate down to 10,000 and 15,000 for the max and work your way up from there until you find a smooth middle ground for your recordings only do this if you're experiencing frame loss or lags in your recordings keyframe interval again leave that at two for your preset select performance or max performance i like leaving it on performance for you guys that are using lower end settings for your profile select high once again have look ahead and cycle visual tuning checked gpu once again at zero and max b frame set at the two and then hit apply now before we go ahead and cover the audio settings i want to make sure i cover the video tab for you guys that are using the lower end pc settings head over into the video tab and for your base canvas resolution make sure it matches whatever your base is on your monitor so if you have a 1080p monitor make sure it's set to 1080p obviously you see i'm recording in 4k here so mine's going to have that 3840 by 2160p setting so just make sure it's set to whatever your native resolution is once you have your base resolution set you're going to head over into the output scaled resolution and you're going to select 1280 by 720 and that's what you're going to be streaming in is 720p for your downscale filter make sure you guys stay away from bicupic and langsos select bilinear fastest but blurry if scaling this will be the least taxing setting for your pc so just make sure you select the first one then for your common fps value for your frames per second start off at 30 and if you don't experience any lag or drop in frames then you can go ahead and try bumping it up to 59.94 or 60 and then try that if it works great if not go ahead and bump it back down to 30 and that's what you're going to use to stream and record in now for those of you that want to stream in 1080p or 1440p or 4k we're going to go ahead and cover that next so once again head back over into the settings as i mentioned if you have nvenc new make sure you select that if not either select your amd gpu or a regular nvenc if you have neither then go ahead and select x264 don't rescale your output here just leave that unchecked for your rate control again make sure you select cbr now let's talk about twitch for a second if you're a partner you'll have transcoding which lets your viewers select different quality settings starting at 360p all the way up to 1080p if you're not a partner you still may get transcoding depending on what game you're playing it's usually on a first come first serve basis you know better than i do what your current situation is i don't want you to stream in 1080p without transcoding because then viewers will have a hard time watching your stream as it will keep buffering for them so test it out and see this is only for twitch you won't have this issue with youtube either way for 1080p select cbr and set your bitrate between 6500 and 8000 some people say this gets throttled by twitch i mean you can try it me personally i stream in bit rates of 7500 to 9000 all the time and i haven't experienced any throttling or setbacks as far as quality goes i've definitely seen other twitch streamers use bit rates higher than 6000 and i haven't seen any issues with quality on their streams i haven't seen twitch throttle their quality back down to 360p or 480p it's been fine i mean this is a common issue i see it becoming less and less of an issue going forward as twitch continues to update their servers but then again like i said just try 6500 try 7000 for 1080p it'll look a lot more crisp than 5500 or 6000 as far as your bit rate goes so go ahead and try it like i said you shouldn't have anything else to worry about worst case scenario it does get throttled back which like i said i've never seen before and you guys can go ahead and just bump that bit rate back down to 6000 which is what twitch recommends for your keyframe make sure you select two for your preset select max quality or quality i'll leave mine at max quality profile make sure you select high look ahead and cycle visual tuning have both of those checked gpu at zero and max b frames at two make sure you hit apply again head over into the recording tab make sure you have advanced selected for your type select standard for the recording path same thing as before select the recording path on your desktop for the format make sure you select mp4 and for your audio track just check one unless you're using a go xlr or something like that and you need more than one audio track once again for your encoder make sure you select nvenc new if you don't have that x264 or your amd graphics card do not rescale your output here we'll do that in the video tab for rate control again select vbr and start at 45,000 for your base and max out at 60,000 for a 4k recording keyframe interval again at two for your preset make sure you select max quality profile again high have both of these checked again both look ahead and cycle visual tuning gpu zero and max b frames leave that at two make sure you hit apply then head over into the video tab for your base canvas resolution make sure it's the same as your monitor for the output scaled resolution make sure you check 1920 by 1080 
And for the downscale filter, this time we're gonna select Langsos, sharpen scaling, 36 samples. And then for your common FPS value, do 59.94 or 60. Make sure you hit apply. Now, if you plan on streaming in 1440p or 4K on YouTube, all these same settings apply. Just make sure you output your scaled resolution to 1440p or 4K, which is 2160p. Now, if you do plan on streaming in 1440p or 4K, you will have to go back into the bitrate. And I do personally change my rate control from CBR to VBR. Once I get in these top tier settings, as far as stream quality goes, you're gonna have to increase that bitrate. There's no doubt about it. For the base bitrate on 1440p, I start at 25,000. And for the max bitrate, I cap out at 40,000. And that's if I'm streaming in 4K. Everything else stays the same as 1080p. Keyframe interval, all these other settings are completely the same. The only thing that really changes is the bitrate. And like I said, I personally like using VBR instead of CBR once I get into 1440p and higher. Like I said, this is only if you plan on streaming in a quality that's higher than 1080p and primarily doing it on YouTube. Everything else stays the same as the 1080p settings. Make sure you hit apply. Now let's finally go ahead and head over into the audio tab here, unless you're using more than one track, which I don't think you are. If you are, you're gonna need a Go XLR. Um, for the audio bitrate, just leave it at 320. That's the highest possible quality that you can record and stream in with OBS. So set that to 320. If you're using more than one audio track, set it to 320 for all of them. Make sure you hit apply. Once you're done there, you're gonna head into the audio tab and for your sample rate, make sure you select 48 kilohertz and for your channels, make sure you select stereo. Now there are certain instances where microphones only pick up one left or right channel of your audio and you'll hear it in your recordings. This is not gonna happen to a ton of you guys out there. It's actually really rare and it depends on what microphone you're using. I have experienced this before. If you're recording and you only hear one side of the audio channel, you can go ahead and temporarily select mono until you figure out why your microphone is doing that. Otherwise, for a majority of you guys, just make sure you select stereo. Once you're done there in the global audio devices, make sure you select your default audio microphone here. For me, it's my Focusrite powering my Rode NT1 microphone. You obviously can use your headset, whatever you have connected here. Make sure you select that as your primary microphone. Everything else here is pretty standard. Make sure you hit apply. Now for your hotkeys, we won't spend too much time on this, you guys know, and if you don't, this is where you can set certain buttons on your keyboard for certain things you would like done, whether it's for a mute button or selecting a scene in OBS with a single button on your keyboard. All of that is here for you guys, and you can set it up any which way you would like. Next up, head into the advanced tab, and for the process priority, make sure you select high, so your CPU knows to focus mainly on OBS when you're using it. And then for the video settings, everything stays the same except the color range. If you have partial, make sure you set that to full, and that's going to wrap up the color part aspect of the video settings. Now, if you do want to go ahead and enable a stream delay, you can go ahead and do that here under the recording path. Make sure you check enable and you can select 20 second delay, 30 second delay, whatever you feel like is necessary to try and avoid those stream snipers in Call of Duty Warzone. I don't think that's going to help you personally, but if you do want to go ahead and do that, you can do that in the stream delay section under advanced. Make sure you hit apply. Now next up, I wanna go ahead and cover the filters that I use in OBS Studio. First up, let's cover the audio filters. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on my mic here on the gear icon and select filters. This is a soundproof room for those of you guys that know that have been here for a while. I mean, this is pretty much as dampening as it's gonna get for you guys, and I still apply filters in here. So the three audio filters that I primarily use are noise gate, noise suppression, and gain. For my noise gate, the closed threshold, I started off at 45, negative 45 decibels, and the open threshold, I leave it at negative 42 decibels. Actually, it should be 41. I like leaving it about four decibels apart. Always make sure your closed threshold is lower than your open threshold, or higher, but on the negative side. Make sure it's always set like this because when a fan is going off, you don't want the fan to pick up before it picks up your voice through the microphone. For the attack time, 25 milliseconds, hold time 200, release time 150. These are gonna come pretty much standard. The only thing you're gonna to have to play with is the open and close threshold. For the noise suppression, I just leave mine at negative 30 decibels. For the method, I use the speaks, lower CPU usage. I haven't had a chance to use the gain because I really haven't had a need to. Uh, usually in the past couple of weeks, I've been altering with different microphones up here in the game room, testing them out for you guys. You won't even have to play with this gain setting unless your microphone quality isn't loud enough. Say you have an SM7B without a cloud amplifier, you may have to go ahead and even then it won't be loud enough. So for the gain tab, you can go ahead and just not even worry about this once you have your noise gate properly set. Next up, I'm gonna show you guys how to set up your color filters in OBS. Now, not all games need this, 
but sometimes Warzone or Black Ops Cold War doesn't look that good, so you may have to go ahead and adjust some color settings. It's super simple to do. You're going to go ahead and whether you're using Display Capture or your Elgato, we'll use my Elgato for just a reference this time, right click on it the same way as you would with the audio filters, select filters, and the two basic effect filters that you're going to use is color correction and chroma key. Once you do go ahead and select color correction, you can see that you can play with your gamma here, your contrast, brightness, saturation, whatever you feel is necessary to make your game look that much better. Saturation, hue shift, opacity, same thing applies with the chroma key. You have smoothness, color spill reduction, contrast, brightness. I mean, you can pretty much go ahead and set up and play with these however you want and whatever you feel looks necessary to make your stream look that much better. But that's how you go ahead and you set up and add the color effect filters in OBS Studio or Streamlabs OBS. Now just to go ahead and show you guys that it's pretty much the same, if you open up Streamlabs OBS and you right click on your Elgato filters, same thing applies here, color correction. With Streamlabs OBS, you do have a bit more as far as filters go. I mean, render delay, lots again, noise suppression, polarity inverts. You have a little bit more as far as filters go on Streamlabs OBS instead of OBS Studio. In my personal opinion, Streamlabs OBS works a little bit smoother and it has a ton more functionality for you guys. But like I said, if you're using OBS Studio or Streamlabs OBS, the foundation of all these settings will remain the same, whether you get an update or not. Everything else is pretty much exactly how it should be. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, make sure you go ahead and drop them down below in a comment section for me. I always try to get back to everyone's comments. If I miss any, I'm sorry, it's not on purpose. The channel is growing really fast. We just hit 10,000 subs last week, and I can't thank you guys enough. So, like I said, just drop them down below, and I'll get back to them as soon as I can. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you smash that like button for me. Subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll catch you guys in my next one. Peace.